Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I first of all just want to <clears throat> stand and speak to a few things that have just been addressed and some things that have been said over the last couple of weeks in regard to our majority. I just want to say I'm thankful to serve with the people I serve with in this majority. In just the last few days, I've had a privilege of young delegates really just revolutionized with their leadership the foster care bill, broadband, and the removal of the social security tax. I've watched and heard people get up, probably just to grandstand for their districts, to throw off on our majority, talk about how things need to be done, but yet the other side for 83 years had the majority and they did nothing but cripple this state. Under this majority since 2014, we have built to have a nine-digit surplus. I want you to think about that here in West Virginia. And I just want to thank the people that have worked so hard, have been so diligent to help to make this possible. Many of my delegates, including my teammates, served in the minority, dog fighting, working hard, and watching West Virginia change to having some of the most liberal laws on abortion that there is. I want to thank this majority for looking to the future, for looking for ways to diversify our economy and making West Virginia the best place to live, work, and raise a family. You know, it was said here just a week or so ago to one of my teammates that the business inventory tax, the guy didn't know, that had never heard anyone tell him that that's why they were leaving this state. Well, let me say this to you. A lot of people don't even know what the business inventory tax is, but they see what the result of that has been, and it has been a very, very restrictive way of keeping jobs from coming here. I think this majority needs to be commended. I think they need to be thanked, because if they had not stepped in and not made the changes that have been made since 2014, it's hard to tell where our state would be. For over 80 years, you had the majority. We have a drug epidemic. We have poor education. We've got resolve that we're trying to take care of. And if your ideas were so great, then why was there such an epic failure? You are poor at governing. It's just the truth. You stand for pro-choice and murdering babies. You stand to take away people's guns. The environmental sister that you all, uh, many of you hang around with are up committing crimes against Rockwell and the Eastern Panhandle. And we have these multitudes of SOGI bills coming up restricting our people in business. I want to say this to you. I'm glad to be a part of this majority. And it's not a perfect caucus. And there's one reason in particular I know it's not a perfect caucus is because I'm a member of it. And I'm not perfect. But I want to make solid decisions. I run to defend the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, religious liberty, pro-life, pro-family. I back right to work and I'm for pro-business and moving this state forward. And I have watched good government since 2014 move this state forward. You can cut it any way you like, but you can't change history. You can't change what you did when you voted. And you can't see clearly that over the last, going in now the fifth year, that it's the best days that our state have ever had. And I want to encourage the folks that are making decisions here that you've got people that are for what you're doing and there may be things that some of us dif disagree on, on peripheral things, but as a whole, I think you should be commended for trying to make this state the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Mr. Speaker, you should be commended. I appreciate you, Madam Majority Leader or Gentle Lady, whatever they prefer in us to say to you now. I want to thank you for your hard work and diligence and my fellow colleagues for working, fighting through obstruction, fighting through fri frivolous endeavors to try to hinder growth, and standing up for the greatest state in the Union, the state of West Virginia. God bless you. Gentlemen, the 16th, Dr. Hornbuckle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.